Good afternoon, Pankas class. This is your Thursday maths lesson. Thank you to everyone who joined in in this morning's live session. We had a look at uh, change, which is something you've been doing earlier on this week. I'm just going to focus, first of all, before we start on today's lesson, which is looking at something completely different. We're going to just have a look at question nine, which a couple of children said that you found a little bit tricky in yesterday's lesson. So the question says, Mo buys a kettle and a toaster. The kettle costs twice as much as the toaster. The total cost is £63. How much does the kettle cost? I'm just going to start by highlighting the important parts of my question. So Mo buys a kettle and a to toaster. The kettle costs twice as much as a toaster. The total cost is £63. How much does the kettle cost? So, if you imagine we've got a kettle and a toaster. So we've got a toaster is one object and the kettle is twice as much. So the kettle is going to cost the same amount and another one. So then we've got three objects. So that, imagine that's the toaster and the kettle, which costs the same amount and another one because it costs twice as much. So I've got three, imagine you've got three objects. So I'm going to divide 63 pounds by three. So you've got 63 pounds and you're going to Count in your threes until you get to 63, or you can uh, do 63 divided by three. So if I, I know that three into 30 is 10, and another three into 30, so three into 60 is 20, and then three into three on its own is one. So I know that 21 times three is 63. You can do that yourself, I know I've shown a few of you. If you can, if you write down your three times tables until you get to it, that will tell you your answer. Or you can share 63 into three sharing circles, and that would also um, get you to 21. So that means that the toaster costs 21 pounds. Now the kettle costs twice as much as that. That's what it says here. So I need to do 21 times two. 21 times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So my kettle is going to cost £42. And just to double check that, you could do 42, which is how much the kettle costs, and add 21, which is how much the toaster costs, and it should get you 63 as your answer. So that's how you can work out question 9. OK, let's go on to today's lesson. So today we are going to be focusing on tally charts. So we finished money for now and we're moving on to something called data handling, which is where we collect information and we put it into different um, charts or graphs to show the information that we've collected. And today's focus is a tally chart. I'd like you to pause the video and have a think if you can remember what a tally chart looks like or what is a tally? Why would I use a tally and what does it look like? If you can remember what a tally is, I'd like you to write down on your piece of paper or your whiteboard what six looks like as a tally. Now, you might not know. That's absolutely fine. But if you can remember, I'd like you to write down what six looks like as a tally. OK, I'm not going to go over the answer just yet. Keep it on there and I'm going to show you what a tally is. So we're going to be recapping our learning from year two. So that we're able to explain what a tally is, to count in fives, because that's really important for our tallies, and to complete missing information on a tally chart. So we've got a little lesson starter before we uh, that's linked to our tallies down here. So I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to work through these four quick lesson starters. So the question one is how much money is there all together? And this is practicing counting in your fives because each coin there is five pence. Multiply, that's the same word, that also means times. 24 by two, what is four times 12? And how many points does class three have? And this is what a tally looks like. And I wonder if you can work that one out by yourself. So pause the video now and have a go at the first four questions for my lesson starter. Off you go. OK, hopefully you've got your answers now and I'm hoping you've written them down before you watch this section of the video, which I'm going to now show you the answers. You can give yourself little ticks as we go. So how much money is there all together? Five, 10, 15, 
20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So altogether, you have got 40 P. Don't forget to do your P because it's asking how much money there is altogether. Well done if you got that one right. You can give yourself a little tick if you got that right. Multiply 24 by 2. Some of you might know this already without having to work it out. If you have to work it out, that's absolutely fine. So you're doing 24. You're multiplying it by 2. That's doubling it. So you could do 24 add 24, or you can multiply it like this. So 4 times 2, 2, 4, 6, 8. 2 times 2, 2, 4. If you've doubled it, you'll know that it should be 48. So the answer is 48. You can give yourself a tick for that one. Four times 12. Now you can do 12, add 12, add 12, add 12, which is what this is saying. Or you could do four, add four, add four, and you would do that 12 times. Or you can also write it this way, because remember when we do multiplication, we can do our numbers either side. It's four times 12, that's the same as 12 times four. I'm gonna write it this way. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 4 is 4. Also 48. Interesting. I wonder if we can use that to see how that they're linked. Because if you think carefully, 24 is double 12. And 4 is double 2. So I wonder if any of, any of you would, could have worked this out using this to help you interesting there and then we've got another one we've got a tally chart here class three and they've got a tally chart i'm going to make it a little bit bigger just to show you you can see the lines i'm going to come onto these in a minute and these lines here this is a group of five so you've got one two three four and then the fifth one goes across and it means you don't have to count each individual line so i've got five ten fifteen and then I've got one, two. So I've got 15, 16, 17. So my total points is 17. So well done if you got that right as well. Okay, let's continue. I'm gonna have a look at some more of our tally chart work for today. So I want to find out the favorite animal of children in the class. I ask everyone and I make a tally of my results. Which of these is easier to read? So here I've got my animals, cat, dog, horse, rabbit. And I've done some lines here so every time someone told me that their favorite animal was a cat, I did a little line. And then over here, I've got exactly the same information, cat, dog, horse, rabbit. And every time someone told me a cat, their, their favorite animal was a cat, I did a line, same with the dog, same with the horse, same with the rabbit. However, there's a difference because over here, I just kept drawing my lines going down. But on this side, when I've got to five, I've drawn a line going across. Now I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to think which one is easier to read, the left hand side or the right hand side. And then I'd like you to write, explain why. So you can tell the adult in the room or whoever's in the room with you, or you can have a think. I want you to think why is the one you've chosen easier to read? Pause the video now just to have a think. Okay, my left hand side one is quite tricky to read because of the little lines. Now it's hard to see on a screen and it's hard to see on my screen, let alone you seeing my screen on your screen. Counting the lines is quite hard. If I was to count, I'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's quite difficult to count the lines. And it could take quite a long time. On this side, I know that's five without even having to count. I know that that's five because it's got the line going across. So I know that's five. I know that's another five, so that's 10. I know that's one, so that's 11. So if this is easier. So well done if you chose this one. This one is easier to read because not only is it easier to read because I don't have to count the lines, I know that's five. It also saves time as well and how to count each individual line. So well done if you said this one is easier to read. Okay, let's keep going. Complete the totals in this tally chart. So here we're going to write the totals by adding up our tally. So the amount of people that liked cats, five, 10, and one. 10 and one is 11. And again, like I said earlier, I didn't have to count each individual line because I know that because that one's going across, that's five. I'm just gonna show you down here just to model it for you. So you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's easier to count in your fives, and a lot of you know your five times tables. Okay, pause the video now for me. I'd like you to complete the next three totals looking at these tallies. So the dog, the horse, and the rabbit. Have a go for me now, please. Okay, hopefully you've done it. So dog has got five. So without even having to count, I can see there's five because it's got the line going across the other tallies. Horse, five and five. So I know that's 10. And rabbit, one, two, three, four. So well done if you've got those. And they are our totals for our tally charts. The astronaut has asked his friends what their favorite drink is. He's missed out some information complete the tally chart. So here I've got my favourite drink. So the astronaut has chosen water, orange juice, blackcurrant, milk and apple juice. And then our middle section is our tally. You can see that two of them are missed out. And then over here is our total. And you can see that three of them have missed out. So we can work these out. So our missing one on our first row, if I slide this down here, water. We're missing our total. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the total that he's missing here is nine. The next one, we've got our total, but we don't have our tally. So I've got to draw my tally of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so I've shown you those two. I'd now like you to do the next three for me. So you need the total for blackcurrant, the total for milk, and then draw your tally for apple juice. So pause the video now for me and try that in your book, on your piece of paper, or on your whiteboard, please. Good. So hopefully you have added your totals for blackcurrant and milk. So blackcurrant, I can see that there's four. So your total there would be four. And I can see that my milk has got a cross going over it, so it must be five. And then for my apple juice is two, so the only tally you need to draw is one, two. So well done if you've done those, that's fantastic. Okay, let's carry on. Whoops, I missed a slide. The astronaut says he has completed the tally chart to show how many animals there are. So he's gone somewhere and, and he's seen all of these animals and he's created a tally chart. Is his tally chart correct? Now, what I'm going to do to help is I'm going to move my animals to help me. Because it's easier to see them. Now, if this was on a piece of paper, you wouldn't be able to move the animals. All you have to do would, have, would count them, and that's absolutely fine. I can move these, so I'm going to use that to help. So I'm going to move all my the cats. I'm going to put my bumblebees up here. I'm going to move my frogs down here. And this just makes it easier to count them. Now, if you are unable to move them, that's fine. What you can do is as you count them, you can put a little cross through them to make sure that you don't count them twice, because sometimes that's what happens. You can get them a bit mixed up. OK, let's see if he's right. So he's got his cat and his tally, his dog and his tally, his frog and his tally, and his bee and his tally. Now, Looking at that, just even just looking at the bumblebees, I can see that he can't be right because this is his bumblebee and this is his tally. And that can't be right. So I'd like you to stop the video and I'd like you to write cat, dog, frog or bee, or you can draw a very quick picture. And next to each of them, I'd like you to do the tally that he should have done. Some of them might be right, but some of them might be wrong. And I'd like you to do the correct tally for what the astronaut should have done. So pause the video now and do that for me for the cat, the dog, the frog and the bumblebee. OK, I'm going to do mine in a different colour so then we can compare it to what he's actually done. So the astronaut said there was one, two, three, four, five, six cats. Now there are six cats, one, two, three, four, five, six, but he's done something wrong. What's he done wrong with the tally here? There are six, what should it look like? 
Okay, if you said there should be a crossover it, fantastic. It should be one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's got six, but it should look like that, not like that. So well done if you've done that. Then the dog, one, two, three, four. Now he's done five, so that is also wrong. So he should have done one, two, three, four. Frog, he said five, six, seven. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven and I'm happy with how he's done it. He has done five and there's two there. So that one is fine. And then bumblebee, he said that there's five, ten. He said there's ten bumblebees, but there's only two. So it should just be one, two. So well done if you managed to do your tallies correctly in those columns. Let's have a look. Now this is your independent task. So it's your turn. You're going to choose between activity one, activity two and activity three. And then there is a challenge at the end that you can challenge yourself. So the first activity, use a ruler to draw the table and complete the totals on the tally chart. If you haven't got a ruler at home, if you use something with a straight edge, so it could be the edge of a book, if you ask an adult to give you something that's got a straight edge to help you, then you can draw your tally chart. And it's looking at the favourite sport of children in a class. So at the top, you would have what you're looking at, so sport. Your middle column is always a tally, and the end column is always total. And the sport is football, tennis, rounders, netball, and gymnastics. And then there's your tally. So you're going to use the tally to help you work out what the total is. And remember, when there's a line going across it, you don't need to count all of those individual lines. You know that that's going to be five. That's your activity one. Activity two, again, you're going to use a ruler or a straight edge to draw the table to complete the missing information on the tally chart. The tally chart shows how three Mandela, so Mandela's class, travel to school. Walk, cycle, car, bus, and train. And again, you're going to draw this. So I've got transport over here, how they got there. Tally chart numbers, tally chart, tally always goes in the middle column and the total goes at the end. And you've got to work out your missing ones using the information you've got. So walk is 17. So you need to draw your tally for 17. Here you're going to count how many cycle and you're going to write your number. You can do the same with these three. Activity three, use a ruler to draw the table again to complete the tally chart for the different food items. So you've got the ice cream, strawberry, bread and a gingerbread man and they are mixed up. So in this one, you might want to um, count them really carefully before you do them. So the ice cream, you would count how many you've got. One, two, three, four. You would do your tally and your total. If you've got this on a piece of paper, once you've counted it, if you cross it off, then you'll remember that you've done it. If you haven't got it on a piece of paper, just count it really carefully. And then don't forget to do your total as well. And then your challenge for today, you've got three challenges. 7A up here, it says add the information on the tally chart. 15 more children go to chess than choir. So you know how many children go to choir? 15 more go to chess. Eight more children go to coding than sewing. So you know how many go to sewing? Eight more than that go to coding. And nine less children go to netball than chess. So once you've worked out the chess one, you can work out what nine left would be. And then you can complete your totals. This question over here, it says, add the lessons to the correct tally. 10 times more children liked PE than history. Now this is trickier because it's only giving you history. You've then got three subjects that you, one of them is going to be PE, one of them is going to be art, and one of them is going to be music. You've got to work out which one is which. It gives you your tally. You've got to work it out. So 10 times more children like PE than history. You need to work out which one here is 10 times more the history. And that one is going to be PE. And you've got four more children liked PE than arts. So which one from the PE one, whichever one you choose, it's got four more and that one will be arts. Sorry, four more children like PE than arts. So which one's got four less? And 13 more children liked art than music so you're gonna have, this one's a bit trickier and then you can do your totals as well iram carried out a pet survey she says 
The difference between the number of children who have dogs and cats is eight. So she's got her pets here, hamster, dog, rabbit, cat. You need to fill in the totals. And it says the difference between the number of children who have dogs, which is this column, this row here, and cats, which is the bottom row. True or false? Is the difference between them eight? Write down your answer of true or false and explain how you know the answer. So they're a little bit trickier ones. I'd like some of you to really try on these challenges because I know that you can do these because some of these ind independent activities are, well, won't take you very, very long. So I want you to really try hard to choose the one that's going to be hardest for you to make sure that you're working the best, your, to your best ability. Okay, good luck with it all. And I will see you all tomorrow in our live session in the morning. Bye, Pancast class.